one, Chair Miller. He's <laughs> gone. I just received a text from Chair Miller. He got in and then he was dropped. So, Vice Chair Kennedy, could you please start the meeting? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Director Budge? Here. Director Harris? Here. Director Howell? Here. Director Hume? Here. Director Jennings? Here. Director Natoli? Here. Director Shanier? Director Serna? Here. Director Valenzuela? Here. Chair Miller, just in case you joined us. Looks like Director Shanier has joined us, correct? Maybe not. No, we didn't hear. We didn't hear from Director Shanier. I'm, I'm on. I've been having some technical problems here. Thank you. We all are, Chair Shanier. And so now, Vice Chair Kennedy. Here. I think we have the quorum at 90 votes unless Chair Kennedy has, I mean, Chair Miller has joined us. So we will go with that. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. Uh, with that, we will start the Monday, May 24th, 2021 meeting of the Sacramento Regional Transit Board of Directors. Uh, would you please uh, mute your mics and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag Hi. of the United States, United States of America and to the Republic for okay. which it stands, which it stands in the nation, in under, nation God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This meeting of the Sacramento Regional Transit District will be cable cast on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel, um, Comcast, Consolidated Communications, and AT&T UVerse. Today's meeting will air on Saturday, May 29th at 1 o'clock and Sunday, May 30th at 2 p.m. on Channel 14 and webcast at metro14live.sacccounty.net and is closed captioned. This meeting can also be viewed on Metro Cable 14's YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you. And that brings us to our consent calendar. We have the consent calendar items 2.1 through 2.10. I'll move consent. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any board member who has any questions of anything that's on consent or would like to have a consent item pulled? Hearing none, uh, does the clerk have any public comment on consent? I do not. Okay, then will you please call the roll for a vote? Director Budge? Yes. Director Harris? Aye. Director Howell? Yes. Director Hume? Aye. Director Jennings? Aye. Director Natoli? Aye. Director Shanier? Aye. Director Serna? Aye. Director Valenzuela? Yes. Vice Chair Kennedy? Aye. And I will try for Chair Miller again. I believe is still absent. With that, the consent calendar passes at 90 votes. That brings us to item number three, which we rarely get to do. And so, but I believe we can this evening if uh, Mr. Lee already did it informally and let's make it more formal. Mr. Lee, if you would like to introduce any special guests that we might have. Uh, yes, actually, uh, Vice Chair uh, Kennedy, you know, we would like to move to act the, the, the item, you know, related to Pauline, you know, presentation a little bit, you know, uh, 
to Lao before we do the Caltrain presentation. If there are no uh, uh, objections from the board, that's fine. Uh, so we have a we have a you know pleasure to invite uh, Treasure Ma uh, to uh, speak uh, a little bit about the power in you know uh, uh, zero emission charger project uh, uh, to 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 share with both some you know wonderful you know stories and the progress and uh, Joe Phil you want to uh, officially introduce you know uh, Treasure Ma. Good. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chofal Borja, Senior Community Relations Officer here at Sacramento Regional Transit. Um, before uh, you'd like to present Treasurer Ma, would you like for me to go about our presentation first? And then perhaps you can speak uh, after so I can at least set up um, the board about this exciting venture that we have at Power In. It's up to Treasurer Ma if uh, she wants to wait, you know, and uh, after the end. Oh, you know, it's okay. I, I can wait. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Treasurer. Um, Adam, if we can get started. Thank you so much. Uh, members of the board, I'm very delighted today to present to you an update of our Power and Light Rail Station Charging Transportation Hub. In February earlier this year, Treasurer Ma invited SACRT and uh, members of SMUD to participate in a newly formed work group of state leaders from GoBiz, state financing authorities, Cal EPA, ARB, CNC, as well as private capital to look at how the Sacramento region can deliver projects that support state goals of zero emission vehicle adoption, as well as reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. Next slide, please. The goal was to look at what pilot projects we can deliver quickly with the potential of public-private partnerships. SACRT and SMUD staff worked to identify potential recommendations and the work group liked the idea of installing high-speed chargers in SACRT's light rail stations. Why do you ask? Well, first, SACRT's light rail stations are strategically located near freeway corridors and schools, businesses, as well as commercial areas. We have a proven track record on expediting project delivery, and on top of that, we do have some CEQA exemptions under public transportation. SACRT can also potentially co-benefit in charging as required by the ARB regulations on our innovative clean transit rule. And on top of that, we have the experience and relationships in managing future electric vehicle fleets through our current CNG station in McClellan. And so with that, um, if you can go to the next slide, please. In partnership with our engineers, SMUD and the uh, Private Capital American Growth and Infrastructure Corporation, the work group looked at the power in site as the most viable um, potential utilization for this pilot project. So the group was uh, posed with a challenge. What is some low hanging fruit that we can potentially address? And how can we combine fast charging, battery storage, and a resilient network in case of emergencies? So we came up with this plan of this pilot project. And our recommendation was to combine the charging hub to feature the fastest chargers in the industry, solar canopies to be installed at our location, as well as battery storage, just in case there's an emergency that requires our um, vehicles that are running in electricity in the future to use for potential charging. And this station should be future proof for Wi Fi, financial touch points, fleet charging, as well as first and last mile solutions. And so we uh, came up with this recommendation with the engineers and we're going through a very exciting project. Next slide, please. In, in combination with SMUD, SACRT and the private uh, company AGI, we're gonna be phasing the installation of um, these high-speed chargers. The first of which are gonna be happening in the next few months, the first set of 10 to power at least 20 vehicles um, on high-speed capacity. The idea of this project is that we wanna be able to work with our external partners, but also receive FTA concurrence to ensure that we're using the appropriate use of transportation funds that have been used in our parking lot. Next slide, please. As part of this, 
AGI and SACRT is currently negotiating in a license agreement that would pay for the market value of the lease that's going to be used on these underutilized parking stations. SACRT, in partnership with the city, as well as guidance from SMUD, is looking for a CEQA notice of exemption. Um, and we are um, having engineering by Sergeant and Lundy, installation by another firm called ETAC, and SMUD is assisting us with new service agreements. And to further kind of go back with this whole idea of buying local, just down the street, Siemens is going to be the preferred uh, level three chargers that are going to be installed at this site. This is not costing SACRT any money. In fact, um, as a potential on the license agreement right now, there will be the market pay of the lease and the potential for revenue sharing um, for SACRT's purposes. Next slide, please. So the power in station presents a lot of community, economic development, and local engagement opportunities. You're familiar with the power in alliance, but this potential site could also fuel not only the county or the city vehicles, but also some of the commercial vehicles that are running parallel in that corridor. It's close to the US 50. It's close to a lot of um, interesting businesses. The California Mobility Center is only gonna be uh, installed there down the street, as well as the potential of um, trade vehicles that could potentially use this fleet as those types of vehicles um, from, um, uh, light duty, medium duty to heavy duty facility uh, vehicles are going to be using high speed charging. And so we're very excited to see that this is an, a, a good corridor to start this pilot project. And we hope to be able to succeed in delivering this project at one third of the time. Next slide, please. So this you can see is a full uh, project schedule build out and critical milestones. We're moving much faster than what we did. Um, uh, comparatively in other installations um, in, in the state. We have a full pledge support and a work group that has been organized and led by Treasurer Fiona Ma. Um, we have good partnership with SMUD with directors Lau and Lee, as well as SMUD director Heidi Sanborn. And we're very excited to invite you all at our June 22nd um, uh, groundbreaking ceremony at the Power and Light Rail Station, where we're gonna be featuring um, our board members and also some keynote speakers to really showcase what the region can do in expediting uh, public-private partnerships, but also identifying regional, local, state, and federal goals in environmental sustainability, electrification, as well as helping our business rebounding from the pandemic. Happy to answer any questions, but um, without further ado, I'd like to uh, invite State Treasurer Fiona Ma to speak on behalf of the project. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you. Thank you, Joe Phil, and thank you, uh, Chair Kennedy and Director Henry Lee, for allowing me just to say a couple words about this project. Um, I am Fiona Ma. I'm your California State Treasurer, and as a State Treasurer, I am your banker. So every revenue source comes into my office, totaling over two trillion dollars a year. I also invest the state's idle funds and the uh, funds for 22 local government units, and I issue all of the bonds, the general obligation revenue lease bonds, as well as bonds for the UC and CSU systems. I also uh, chair 13 active boards, commissions, and authorities that funds affordable housing, public transportation, green energy, schools, hospitals, and the like. And so it's um, it's a great place to be able to work on certain economic development projects such as this, and also uh, be able to solicit my experts to uh, jump in and do this collaboration. So it really started uh, back in probably February when the American Growth and Infrastructure Corporation uh, approached my office and said, we would really like to do a high speed uh, electric vehicle charging station, given that the governor has uh, you know, issued that executive uh, order on September 23rd, 2020, uh, really setting goals for uh, zero emission vehicles. So I said, wow, that's great. Cause you know, all projects need money. And they weren't asking for money from the treasurer's office. They actually came and said, we have money that we would like to invest. Where can we do it? And I understood that for EV charging stations, the grid and electricity um, is an important component. And working with some of the private uh, companies, 
I thought was going to be difficult. Um, and so I thought SMUD would be a great place uh, to uh, to talk about this first, given that SMUD has uh, extremely progressive goals that they are trying to manage. And um, personally, they're a great organization and um, provider. And I knew Heidi Sanborn, one of the directors, very, very well. And so I called her and I said, hey, Heidi, what do you think about us doing this pilot project in the SMUD region? And she, her eyes lit up and she said, oh my God, this is exactly what we're trying to do at SMUD. We're ready. We want to, you know, we want to get out there and, and in front. So what can we do? So then we, the next step was like, okay, where can we put these EV charging stations, right? We're trying to get as many uh, people to go and buy electric vehicles, but of course the infrastructure is lacking at this moment and of course range anxiety. So then uh, we thought about SACRT. I had uh, met Henry and Joe Phil um, talking about housing, affordable housing on some of your uh, parcels. And so I knew that you all had land and also uh, different stations in the inner city, in the SMUD area. And so we approached Henry and Joe Phil and they said, oh my God, it's amazing. We already have electric buses and we want to expand our network and we've got land and we really want to uh, do this. And so that was the synergy uh, that it took is everybody was so excited. Then I called my good friend, Jared Blumenfeld. He is the secretary for environmental protection. And I said, Jared, uh, what are you all doing um, in terms of you know, trying to you know, meet our zero emission vehicle goals? And he said, well, uh, we have issued a zero emissions vehicle market development strategy. And part of the executive order was for uh, go biz and the governor's office to create this strategy by January 31st, 2021. And true to their word, February 2021, they did produce uh, this strategy and it's centered around four market pillars. One, vehicles, two, infrastructure, three, end users, and four, workforce. And so this project is really focused on number two, infrastructure, at the stations, as well as grid integration for the fueling systems. And then the strategy also had five core principles. One, equity in every uh, decision. Two, embracing all zero emissions pathways. Three, collective problem solving. Four, public actions drive greater private investment. And five, designing for system resilience and adaptability. And so this project really is uh, hitting the number four core principle, public actions drive greater public investment, where this would actually increase uh, scaling of the ZEV market. So we started our first meeting. Uh, we invited uh, all the stakeholders that I mentioned, and there was more than one representative. Um, I also invited Derek Chernow from my office. He is the executive director for CAFTA, the California Alternative Energy and uh, Financing Transportation Authority, as well as Cal, um, the C, uh, CPCFA, California Pollution Financing Control Agency. So he controls both of our green energy um, divisions. And with that, we had our first meeting on February 9th. Um, lots of great synergy. Everyone was, you know, high fiving. How can we do this? How can we do it faster? And a short four months later, we are going to do our press conference on June 22nd at 10 a.m. at the Power in Sight. So the lesson is, if you find the right partners who are all focused on achieving a goal and given SACRT, not only do you have land, but you also have some CEQA exemptions that would cut the time uh, for us to be able to launch this pilot project. Uh, everything has really uh, come full circle. Uh, we're very, very excited. Everybody has been working hard to meet their goals. And another component that's important to me and the governor is by local, right? By California. And so using Siemens, who has a large footprint here in Sacramento, as well as eTech, which is also based in California, is also in another exciting uh, plus for this project. So I hope you're all going to come to our ribbon cutting uh, ceremony and 
we are hoping that this project is going to be first in the nation, the largest uh, pilot project, and that we will uh, be on record as being the leader again, as always here in California. We always want to be the leader. We always want to be the first and we always want to be the biggest. And so I thank SAC RT and all the board members for your, um, your vision uh, and your willingness to participate in this pilot project. Thank you, Treasurer Ma. Uh, thank you for your leadership, your partnership, and um, particularly honoring us with your presence here tonight. Uh, we sincerely appreciate it. Are there any questions from the board? Okay, that's that means it was a very thorough presentation. So uh, we, we sincerely appreciate it. And uh, it's very exciting and look forward to uh, moving forward. Henry, do you have any comments? Just want to say uh, again, uh, thank you for your uh, you know, outstanding leadership, uh, treasure. Uh, you know, as the, um, the, our private partner, American Growth for Infrastructure you know, Company Corporation said, by the private industry standard, this project from beginning to the groundbreaking is still most, you know, um, if efficient or productive project. I mean, uh, nobody have done that, you know, done this like that in such short period of time. So I just want to thank you for the partnership and uh, we're going to bring the, um, uh, the final project approval to the board, you know, in our next board meeting. And we will send a detailed invitation to all our board members uh, on our June 22nd, uh, 9 a.m. Uh, groundbreaking ceremony. Uh, the governor probably will join us too, uh, is still in the confirmation. Uh, thank you, uh, Treasurer Ma, again. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership into the board. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, the clerk, please call the next item. Next item is item 3.1 information Caltrans Comprehensive Multimodal Corridor Plan presented by Deborah Salinas. And if we could, we're gonna ask you to please mute yourselves because we are hearing an echo. We appreciate it. Deborah. Thank you, Cindy. Good evening, directors. And tonight, Caltrans District 3 will update SACRT and the public on the development of several comprehensive multimodal corridor plans. These plans are statutorily required for competitive grant programs and SACRT staff has been actively engaging Caltrans stakeholders to develop strategies and identify transportation projects that will reduce congestion, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and improve multimodal access in our busy highway system, such as Interstate 5 and Interstate 80. This evening's presenters are Danera Soto, the, the Corridor Planning Manager, and Sue Takar, the Deputy District Director for Caltrans 3. With that, I'll now turn it over to Ms. Soto. Actually, I will start it off. Um, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Sue Tanaker. I am the Deputy for Planning, Local Assistance and Sustainability for Caltrans District 3. Thank you very much for inviting us today. We are very excited to share with you a brief status on our efforts to develop comprehensive multimodal corridor plans. We call them CMCPs for short because a very long title to repeat over and over again. Um, before Going to the topic, I wanted to talk to about, talk about the SACRT and Caltrans partnership. We've had a wonderful experience working with SACRT staff, and uh, we meet quarterly on, um, on various items of mutual interest, but we also have conversations on a pretty regular basis on items that we're working on because funding applications or trying to increase transit amongst our corridor limits. We appreciate the support of SACRT. In the recent past, SACRT has been working with us hand in hand on our funding applications for our I-5, I-80, and Cap City Managed Lane projects. We applied for SACOG discretionary grant cycle funds, federal funding programs like INFRA, as well as the SB1 applications for congested corridor program and trade corridor enhancement program. Based upon our great partnership and collaboration, we have been successful in both cycles of Senate Bill, Senate Bill 1, SB1, with a total award of approximately $255 million for this region. In Cycle 1, we submitted two projects under congested corridors programs. 
one being the US 50 Multimodal Corridor Enhancement Project. We were awarded approximately 110 million. Out of this 110 million, Caltrans received 90 million and SACRT received 20 million to increase the transit service along the goal line to every 15 minutes from downtown Sacramento to downtown Folsom. That was a great feat and it's gonna be helping our customers reduce VMT, vehicle miles traveled and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Our partnership with SACRT was critical in including rail line improvements to help reduce, reduce VMT, but also provide operational improvements to the US 50 main line. SACRT and Caltrans utilized a combination of shop funds, the state funds and transit and inner city rail funds called TERSIP for short, as a match for successfully competing for this program. In total, Caltrans leveraged $278 million in shop funds from our US-50 rehab project, and SACRT leveraged approximately $28 million in TERSIP funds to help fund the light rail improvement project. The other project submitted was the I-5 HOV lanes project in which we were awarded $15 million. For cycle two, our success continued. It was a collaborative effort between Caltrans, SACOG, PCTPA, and SACRT, amongst other local partners. We were awarded $67 million for this $135 million bundled project package. SACRT received approximately $34 million for the Watt I-80 light rail station improvements and modernization of four light rail stations, as well as procurement of eight, floor, eight low floor vehicles. Under the Trade Corridor Enhancement Program for Cycle 2, Caltrans partnered with SACOG, Sacramento County, and PCTPA for the Capital Region Freight Improvement Project. We were awarded $63 million, and half of that went to our local partners. We look forward to continuing our partnership in future funding rounds, including the RAISE applications that we're currently working on for the I-5 project that are due July 15, and also SB1 Cycle 3 applications, which will be announced in summer of 2022. It's only with great partnership that we can get great results. And we are very fortunate to be partners with SACRT and many of you that are sitting across from me today. So I really appreciate all the partnership and teamwork. Now for the presentation. The Caltrans District 3 team, led by Danera Soto, my corridor planning manager, will present the briefing on two of our four CMCPs that are currently being developed. We have a few staff online to assist in addressing any questions regarding the I-5 and I-80 CMCPs, and also the I-5 and I-80 managed lane projects. So, Danera. Thank you, Sue. Hi. As Sue mentioned, I will be providing you with an overview of what a comprehensive multimodal corridor plan is, otherwise known as a CMCP. CMCPs are, are being developed to meet the long range planning needs of the corridor as well as the requirements outlined in California Transportation Commission's 2018 CMCP guidelines, which require a CMCP be completed for cycle three or, 22, or 2022 funding cycle and future cycles of the congested corridors program established by Senate Bill 1. CMCPs are required to include stakeholder and public engagement, among other requirements. They will also be taking into consideration recommendations from California State Transportation Agency's Climate Action Plan for Transportation Infrastructure. The CMCPs will define how a corridor is performing, why it is performing the way that it is, and will recommend projects and strategies to achieve goals within a particular corridor. CMCPs must be designed to redu reduce congestion in highly traveled corridors by providing more transportation choices for residents, commuters, and visitors to the area of the corridor while preserving the character of the local community and creating opportunities for neighborhood enhancement projects and providing environmental benefits. Improvements may be made on the state highway system, local streets and roads, public transit and rail facilities, as well as bike and pedestrian facilities. Some of the benefits of the CMCPs are in meeting requirements for SB1 funding with the SCCP requiring funding be made available for projects that make specific measurable performance improvements and are part of a CMCP. They will also show collaboration between our partners and the communities along the corridors will identify multimodal solutions for the corridor 
and we'll have a list of prioritized project recommendations that we can use for future funding cycles. I apologize. Um, I clicked too many times on our PowerPoint. Um, why? And so this brings us to our partnerships and why are these important and what's in it for everyone? While the SCCP requires a CMCP, the CMCPs themselves will demonstrate coordination among agencies. They will include a robust analysis and enables the region to compete for other funding programs as well. Here on this slide are our combined partners for both the I-5 and the I-80 CMCPs. Our collaboration involves a variety of groups, as you can see, from regional transportation planning agencies, cities, counties, transit agencies, local Native American tribal governments, and others. Currently, there are representatives from these organizations that participate in either technical advisory committee meetings or stakeholder meetings. All of these meetings have already been scheduled for the length of the CMCP process through its completion in November of 2021. So what are the areas being covered in the CMCPs? The I-5 CMCP incorporates the complete I-5 corridor in Sacramento County and a portion of Yellow County, ending at the State Route 16 junction in the city of Woodland. The I-80 CMCP covers the entire I-80 corridor in Solano and Yellow Counties and a portion of the I-80 corridor in Sacramento County ending at the State Route Junction in the City of Sacramento. This CMCP also includes a portion of US-50 in Yolo and Sacramento counties, starting at the I-80 Junction in the City of West Sacramento and ending at the Junction in Sacramento. One difference between these two CMCPs is that Caltrans District 3 and District 4 have partnered on this joint CMCP effort for the I-80 corridor to better understand the issues on the corridor and to plan appropriately. Both corridors accordingly will include passenger rail line, freight rail line, ports, local parallel arterial roadways, bike and pedestrian facilities. We will be looking at projects that are fiscally constrained within SACOG's MTP SES. The CMCP's focus is to look at all multimodal solutions for the corridor, and this can be in the form of interchange modernization, which will allow better freeway access, as well as better transit, bike, and pedestrian accessibility. We'll be looking at if better access is needed for bike and pedestrian paths. The CMCP goals are to come up with a comprehensive set of solutions to address the corridor's challenges and opportunities. And these are just some of the examples of potential multimodal solutions we will be looking at. Most of the performance measures are either recommended in CTC's 2018 CMCP guidelines or derived from the corridor goals and objectives that align with Caltrans policies and strategic goals, as well as regional goals. This brings us to our public engagement. The I-80 CMCP website went live on January 8th, 2021, which also hosted a virtual open house from January 8th through the 15th. The I-5 CMCP website is currently under construction with a tentative date of going live in June of 2021, which will also include a virtual open house and survey. The survey's objective is to obtain information from the public, such as who they are, how they're using the corridor, and why, such as for recreation, work, or appointments. The public will have an opportunity to join our mailing list to receive updates on future outreach by visiting the websites and signing up. Additional outreach will occur this summer. The additional public outreach will be conducted to obtain more information from the public to help us set project priorities. The CMCPs will be completed by November of 2021. Our partners, such as ARC-SACRT, have already been assisting us in letting the public know of the work we are doing by providing links on their own websites or, or social media platforms, such as when the I-80 CMCP website went live. Some ways that you can also assist is by letting us know if there are other areas or communities we need to do additional, additional outreach to. So what are our next steps? The first step for future transportation project funding is to have a prioritized list of projects in a CMCP and show partnership collaboration. Then Caltrans and its regional partners can apply for funding and implement a construction schedule for corridor improvements. 
And that brings us to the completion of this presentation and we'll open it up for any comments or questions you may have. Thank you. Danette. Are there comments from the board or questions? I have a question chair. Yes, please director Valenzuela. Thank you. So with the type of projects you're looking for, I'm thinking about like something like the American River crossing for the light rail. Is that the sort of project idea that you'll be exploring in this? Just trying to figure out the boundaries. Thank you very much for that question. The project will be multifolded. So it will be infrastructure project, bikes and pads, you know, freight mobility, or the improvements that we mentioned before, like the light rail and vehicle procurement. But what we have noticed is that the projects being diverse and touching all different modes, all different travel choices are the ones that are going to be the most competitive, but also to make, make the most sense in reducing vehicle miles traveled and also greenhouse gas emissions. So great question. And the project list will be a comprehensive list of all those types of projects, ranging all different modes. Great. Well, I would love to see that considered because it would help take cars off of I-5, which I know is a big strategy and bikes and pedestrians, hopefully. So thank you for your presentation. Very informative. Definitely. Thank you so much. Any other questions or comments from the board? All right. Well, thank you very much for again. I'll say you know vir virtually what I said before uh, to the treasurer and that for uh, Caltrans partnership here. Uh, the the work that you're doing in the district that I represent down in I five uh, is really truly transformative, and it's nothing compared to what you're talking about now. So, uh, thank you very much, and and. And we appreciate you here in Sacramento. Well, we appreciate all of you as partners. Thank you very much. And we'll see you again very soon. Have a good evening. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, we're waving. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Clerk, next item, please. The next item is public addresses the board on matters not on the agenda. And I have one comment. If you'd like me to read that now, Vice Chair Kennedy. Please. The comment is from Jeffrey Tardigia. Some things take years, but Regional Transit Board needs to address public comments, public hearings, and encourage public support. Regarding the hybrid Roberts rules and public input, the assembly has a system that works. Senate and public commissions only ATT to listen and be assigned a number. Why does Regional Transit have a webinar account with Q&A with the chat to respond to public questions for this budget? Last year's budget, each amendment to budget item. The total expense, revenue source, capital operating, real estate budget, projects ongoing, completed next cycle, multiple years. Light rail station revisions. Like at last board meeting, 200 pages docs don't get read in two days. How has the previous budget different from this year? And what is different about having all this cash in the budget? The electronic bulletin board has been out for over a year. Also bus stop at 8th Street Shelter 320 for Route 51 still is invalid stop like the tech sac rt bus stop number thank you for fixing i have ridden around on buses from downtown and 65th street more riders but still less than 10. you need to get destinations in people's minds so they will ride also because of changes for 38 81 you have lost a bus stop across from target second street and 65th street I'm sorry. Uh, it would be nice if a replacement for Target could be considered instead of crossing east and westbound freeways on ramps. Thank you for also getting 67th Street signal working instead of two months blinking red light. It is a year away, but you really need the board to understand the 10 year process and how low floor means redesigning light rail stations as well as space needs in center of low floor. And for your information, staff will be replying separately to Mr. Tardigia's multiple comments listed in his email. 
And that concludes any public comment on matters not on the agenda. Thank you, Cindy, and thank you, Jeffrey, if you are on the line, thank you for your continued support of RT and your always productive comments, much appreciated. Next item, please. The next item is the general manager's report, item 8.1. Mr. Lee? Yes, uh, good evening, uh, Vice Chair Kennedy, members of the board and the public. Uh, again, I want to take a minute to thank our special guests from Caltrans for a presentation on the CMCP. We're truly hopeful this plan will identify strategies and projects that will reduce traffic congestion, reduce greenhouse emission, and improve the livability of our community. And another, many, another you know, very important purpose is to you know, be able to uh, position ourselves well to get more state fundings, especially you know, after state may revise, there will be some uh, competitive additional funding available, just like what you know, we did for the powering uh, you know, uh, zero emission uh, vehicles uh, charging station. And uh, that will position us very well to get additional money, not just from state and also from federal. And uh, two projects are, are, are just so exciting to us in terms of to get, you know, to get more funding in the future. And uh, Sarkat and Caltrans enjoy a highly productive and collaborative working relationship uh, as we look to improve the mobility for all. We have already been awarded funding to improve headways and the gold line and to speed up our library modernization conversion. And the next month, we will be offering free rides on our library system it, as Caltrans shuts down portions of State Route 99 for critical road work. When we shut down, you know, when we shut down, uh, the, the Caltrain shuts down uh, the portion of this, and uh, we, when we provide the free rides, actually Caltrain, uh, you know, uh, is graciously uh, reimburse the uh, fair revenue we're going to lose as a, a free rise. And I just want to thank them for, uh, you know, partnering with us. Then before I ask Deborah to make a presentation on Sarkati's preparations for ridership retaining, I would like to provide a couple of updates. Uh, a few board meetings ago, I mentioned Sarkati's marketing department had won the American Planning Association's uh, Sac Sacramento Valley Section 2021 Award of Merit in Public Outreach. Tonight, I'm pleased to report that our marketing department uh, has won another national award. We were informed last week that Sakati has won the first place award in APTA's at will competition. We'll win first place for best marketing and the communications to support rideship for our comprehensive drive the vote campaign. As you know, we helped eliminate barriers to vote centers and encouraged uh, civic participation through our free rights to voting centers in November election last year. Congratulations to all involved with the Sakati Ford project and the Drive to Vote campaign, as it was truly a team effort. Then uh, I would also like to congratulate our finance department for the 19th consecutive years. They have received the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award from the Government Finance Officers Association called JIVA. JIVA has an independent panel of reviewers and this award is the highest form of recognition in governmental budgeting. Uh, speak of funding, the governor has released his May revised uh, that detailed spending for the state's budget surplus called uh, the, Cal the California Comeback Plan. Uh, 
the proposal includes uh, transportation investment that will position the states to take advantage and leverage federal infrastructure funding, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, some key transportation investments proposed include uh, one billion for pro priority transit and rail project, 1.4 billion for zero emission buses and the trucks, and the 407 million for zero emission rail and the transit equipment purchases, like what we're going to do in the um, power in light rail station. 500 million for active transportation, 500 million for high priority great separations and the great crossing improvements to support critical safety uh, Im improvement throughout the state. And the Secretary is hopeful these investments are included in the final budget, and we certainly you know, look forward to take a full advantage of this funding because we are ready. Switching the topic a little bit, and uh, as we all know, Sakati is working with uh, city of Elk Grove to bring the city's transit service into the district as a member entity effective Thursday, July 1st. It's just about 40 days or less than 40 days from now on. Sakati has been operating e-train and e-van services and the service contract since July 2019. Uh, under the annexation agreement, Sakati will provide fixed route local commuter and paratransit service and maintenance operations for the city of El Grove. Uh, the staff from both sides are working diligently to develop an integration plan to ensure a seamless transition of operations. Tomorrow, uh, Sakati and the El Grove staff will be hosting an El Grove transition task force to hear from current writers and the transit stakeholders and we hope to answer questions and receive input on the transit service uh, performance matters. Uh, so uh, before I ask uh, Deborah to start her presentation, I would like just to share a short video produced by the Federal Transit Administration for the American Public Transportation Association's legislative conference last week. Uh, I want to thank the FTA and our federal delegation for the support of transit and the essential role we play in our communities. Adam, please play the video. Now, after that, uh, Deborah, please go ahead you know, to present our plan for the you know, uh, preparation for the retaining writers and new writers. So we need to stay focused on creating jobs and beating this pandemic today and building back better for tomorrow. administering an average of three million shots per day. Once in a generation investment. In fact, it's the largest American jobs investment since World War II. Now, the transportation sector is the U.S. economy's largest contributor to greenhouse gases. And that relationship to the problem of climate change means that we in transportation can also be the biggest part of the solution.
I'm not sure if you all recognize a very familiar face in that video, but our very own Henry Lee was featured in the FTA. So you might have to go back on YouTube and check that out. Um, tonight, an overview of some of ridership building campaigns. And as you've heard through Henry's previous board updates, the SACRT team has kept very busy during the pandemic with numerous partnerships, service integration, and technology improvements to improve the customer experience. Here's a quick rundown of what we've accomplished over the last year and what we are planning in the months ahead. We launched several ridership campaigns, including Causeway Connection Service, connecting the cities of Davis and Sacramento in partnership with Yellow Bus. And after more than 30 years of contracting paratransit services, we transitioned it back in-house with a new name and new branding, calling it SACRT Go. We collaborated with the California State Transportation Agency, the City of Sacramento, and others to transform 10 of our buses into free Wi-Fi super hotspots. We also extended the successful Ride Free RT Fare Free for Youth program for a second year. And more recently, with many schools reopening for in-person learning, we tied it to the startup of our 200 series bus routes. We also expanded Smart Ride service to nine zones in 2020. And this year, we expanded three of those service areas to provide more coverage. To help promote the expanded service, the marketing team created an extensive campaign, even collaborating with Rayleigh's on a joint offer to promote taking Smart Ride on Rayleigh's $5 Mondays. I just want to share some quick results of the Smart Ride campaign, which we applied earned, owned, and paid media. Campaign timeline was approximately one month in April with the goal to create an understanding of Sacrity's three expanded Smart Ride zones and increased ridership. The campaign received 13 news media stories with over 257 impressions, almost 32,000 social media impressions, and the pay portion of the campaign garnered over 1 million impressions. We sent push notifications through the Smart Ride app, resulting in over 2,000 views with a 65% click through rate. We had over 8,400 unique page views on our website. And overall, this campaign example resulted in a ridership increase of over 50% in two of the three expanded service zones. We plan to use similar tactics for all our campaigns, including the use of other languages. As the region reopens in June, we have a lot more ridership campaigns in the pipeline ready to roll out. Here are just a few examples. On July 1st, we are ready and excited to officially bring the City of Elk Grove's Transit Services back into SACRT, along with adding some new service, including a new smart ride zone in Elk Grove, and Elk Grove youth in grades TK through 12th, will be eligible to ride the entire SACRT system free with the Ride Free RT program. In August, we'll be launching the Los Rios Pass program, and we hope to be able to do so with Sacramento State as students return to campus. In September, the Airport Express bus service will return once again, as well as a new commuter route 124, and we're currently in the process of doing a survey to see if the route is um, something that the Orangeville residents will work for them traveling to Rancho Cordova along Sunrise Boulevard with a stop at the Sunrise Station. But that's not all. We also count on our partnerships with regional organizations and agencies to increase reach, especially during a pandemic year where it's very difficult to have one on one events and staff booths at special events. For example, we have helped keep our region healthy with free rides to vaccine locations. We are offering free rides every Wednesday through June 16th to help job seekers connect with job opportunities at businesses in the central city. And this coming weekend, in support of the Sacramento region's restaurants, we will be offering free rides on Sunday, May 30th, so people can get to their favorite dining establishment car-free throughout our system. We've also teamed up with Caltrans to offer free rides, as you heard earlier, to relieve traffic congestion during their Fix Sac 99 project, which will require a complete closure of a section of Highway 99 in June. In July, we're hoping to also provide free rides system-wide on the 4th of July, to anyone wanting to travel to Independence Day celebrations across the region. And I'll be returning next month with the staff report to delegate authority to the general manager CEO to approve up to 10 system-wide free ride days during this calendar year to encourage ridership. As the region gets back to a new normal with employees returning to their offices and people feeling more comfortable shopping, going out to restaurants and gathering with others, SACRT is ready to safely welcome more riders. Starting today, we launched our SACRT is Ready Get On Board campaign to remind the public and our customers that our system is clean, safe, and convenient and a great way to travel throughout the region. By now, you should have received a toolkit from Jessica Gonzalez. Please know that we always appre appreciate your and your staff support in sharing the different campaigns, and we know there's a lot of them, so thank you. 
with your many constituents and followers. Similar to our many other campaigns, we will be incorporating a mix of media to raise awareness. I'd also like to share a 30 second campaign video that we just posted today on social media. And Adam, if you don't mind, please hit play. Okay, I know we're having technical difficulties. Oh, there we go. I know I covered a lot in a short amount of time. However, there's so much more we we're working on to improve the customer experience, including contactless fair payment options, first last mile partnerships, new apps, and of course, our light rail modernization project. With that, that concludes my presentation. I'll turn it back over to Henry or Cindy. Well, that concludes the GM you know, portion report. Uh, go back to uh, Vice Chair Kennedy. Thank you, Henry. Are there any comments or questions from the board? I, I will, uh, you know, whether I was chairing tonight or not, I would, Deborah. you know, please pass on to your staff, your team. You guys are doing a fantastic job. I mean, it's really a, among the best of uh, any public agency I've ever seen. So thank you very much. Thank you. Chair Kennedy. You're here. Yes. Sir. Yeah, I just, I, I want to kind of add on to that. I, I really am impressed with the marketing and the ideas and the innovation and just having the customer share an experience that maybe they haven't seen in the past. And it, just an incredible job. So please give uh, the attaboy and atta girl to the staff for a great job of what we saw here tonight. Others? Yes, Direct <clears throat> Director Hume. Thank you. I, I just want to add on to that. And one thing that particularly uh, stood out to me, Deborah, I mean, obviously, the, the pandemic presents uh, a challenge and an opportunity in, in trying to get people to rethink their patterns and, and get back on transit. Um, and but a lot of that has to do with confidence and, and feeling uh, good about that choice. And so I think the tagline of we're ready when you're ready really is a very compassionate and enthusiastic tagline. And I thought it was a particularly insightful to, to put that on there. So thank you for whomever came up with that little bit. Sure. Valenzuela. Yeah, and thank you. I think the strategic um, use of free ride days is really great. And I just want to encourage my colleagues, like I was using the smart ride, um, I think the week before last, and I posted photos and I had like 10 people message me and be like, wait, what? Like, how do I download that app? Where does it go? How does it work? And so like using our platforms to help like encourage people to get out there as well. But um, thank you. And just want to echo everything my colleagues just said. Great, really fantastic job. Great. Thank you very much. Next item, please. Reports, ideas, and questions from directors, if any. Board members? Next item. That concludes the items on the agenda, Vice Chair Kennedy. And we have no closed session, so uh, with that, I will Thank my colleagues for rolling with the punches tonight. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, we are adjourned. Thank you. Have a great Good evening. Good night, everybody. Chair, Chair Kennedy? Yes, sir. You did an outstanding job of chairing the meeting, brother. <laughs> you got it wrong. Outstanding. I mean, if I want.